Morning, I'm Daryl Jones, Director of Research at Hedgeye. Welcome to the Macro Show for March, uh, sorry, April 19th. Long week last week, 2021. Uh, Keith's back in the studio, had a well-deserved vacation, and we are back at it. Did you miss me, buds? I did. I actually took a couple days, too. Took my daughter up to the Catskills, which was fun, although you had much nicer weather. Uh, so it was raining in the Catskills, but we, we, we got after it a bit. No matter where you are with your family, it's a good place to yeah, be. I agree it, with that. It was good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for all the fine feedback uh, for all of our Secker Heads, uh, great deep team that we have. I'm quite fortunate to have these teammates. Top three things this morning in my notebook. Number one, the U.S. dollar. Number two, going to hit on commodities. And then, of course, number three, going to hit on the 10-year bond yield one more time. Uh, dollar, isn't, isn't it a funny thing, right? Isn't it a funny thing? You go back in this chart... And the anxieties that people have had three times now, not two, not one, three times, three times. So we're not, now we have the third time where we have the dollar down for two consecutive weeks and breaking down faster this morning against some of the most consensus positions. In fact, two of the most consensus positions you can have from a macro per perspective. You can see that in CFTC futures and options contracts. Uh, there's two green arrows on the currency side. One is in Swiss francs and one is in Japanese yen. So again, those are epic short positions. In fact, I think I signaled buy on the Japanese yen right at the low. Uh, you know, it wasn't obviously last week, it was before that. So again, it is what it is. You get crowding, you get consensus, you get people that don't understand the quads are just chasing charts. I don't chase charts. I don't do those 50-day moving monkeys. There were no monkeys in the Bahamas. Nope, 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 nope. Dollar down equals everything else, particularly commodities, straight up. That's point number two this morning. In fact, if you flip uh, the switch on the correlation table as well there, Genron, uh, you can see a couple things here. One on the 15-day, which is the immediate term trade duration, uh, three weeks or less, you can see that the S&P 500, which has made eight all-time closing highs here in the month of April, so again, quad two and Q2 indeed, or it's the CRB index itself with a 0.89 or gold uh, 0.86. That also helped gold, obviously. So again, uh, all of it was the same thing last week. So again, you sit there and you say, okay, well, what do I do with that? Well, we stay long commodities and we stay short gold. I'm not going to be long all that. Absolutely not. I'll get to the gold point in a second because uh, it largely has to do with interest rates, as you know. But at the end of the day, this is really easy. Back to that chart. Remember we talked about consolidation signals? Okay, the way a consolidation signals looks, for those of you that are new to the show and thank you for joining us, I walked through this. Go back to that CRB index chart. There's a big circle there. That's called the consolidation zone. That's where you allow your five and seven year old kid to swim in the Bahamas. Okay, that's okay. Now, if it was breaking down and there were big black fins coming in the water and it was getting breaking lower into the depths, don't let little Lucy swim there. No, 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 no. That's not the short end of the pool. That is a problem, okay? So again, there's two different things, and I've said many times. When something corrects, it's either a, cons a correction, consolidation signal, or it's the beginning of something new. Now, if you thought it was the beginning of something new and you bought the dollar a month ago, and, and God forbid you uh, shorted oil, that's terrible, right? I mean, oil was up 6.5% last week alone. Right? Look at, look at uh, anything this morning. Look at copper. That's another consolidation signal. Look at that. See that circle? It looks just like the CRB index, buds. There you go. We're back on the show here this morning, buds. Consolidation within a bullish trend. All right? That's what it is. Now, rookies, they don't get that. They get head faked out of every move, every down move, and anything they own. Holy crow, he's gone on vacation. Well, I think part, part of it is probably missing the move too right from the the full, yeah. full cycle move. even if you don't get all the move but if you miss a good chunk of that then you get freaked out right because yeah. it's all of a sudden they're sort of this brownie in motion back and forth it's not going up anymore well, and then but it by does. the way things don't go up every day and after forever. after people whine and complain and cry about it or short it a lot of hedge funds are shorting copper shorting freeport back rent terrible decisions terrible Freeport's going to report a fantastic quarter this week. Uh, so, again, at the end of the day, that's what you have. And, again, we're, we've been bullish on commodities not since those charts started. Back at oil and CRV. One more time, General. Little, let's get back together here. Look, get back. look at oil, copper, CRV index. We don't have oil, but it looks a lot like copper. Uh, you know, so we've not been bullish since November. We've been bullish since June, right? So that's the full investing cycle. Corrections are meant to be bought, not wind upon. No, no, no. You get a huge correction in Bitcoin. It's another major commodity out there. You get it over the weekends. The Saturday night buy the damn dip exercise. Yeah. When it's below, using the water example one more time, you know, let's say we're in the short end of the pool. Lucy's in there. She's got a, 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 a ball, right? She can hold that ball underwater for so long, under the low end of the wrist range. Oh, my God, it's under the low end of the range. That's not like below the concrete in the pool. No, 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 no. That means that if it's held below the low end of the range for long enough, boom, where is a ball go? Goes up into the air. Glorious, Lucy. 
I love my Lucy. All right. Point number three this morning, 10-year yield. So why are we shorting gold today? Why are we shorting uh, more treasuries this morning when I got up this morning? It was great. I woke up this morning. I wasn't drinking. Uh, it was the first day in six. Uh, and, and, and the S&P had eight uh, all-time highs. You know, I haven't had a cocktail yet today. It's a great day you know, to be shorting more bonds. And, you know, you had an opportunity this morning right at the low end of the range, sitting right there, right? You got it. 1.55, 1.56, 1.57. Now we're at 1.60. What are you going to do at 175? Right? Are you going to wonder and worry? Are you going to have looked at the German bond yield last week, which was up, or is up at a new cycle high this morning, or the Swiss 10-year yield last week, which was up, it wasn't down. It was a thing that happened, and who cares what it was? It wasn't a shark. It wasn't quad four. We're still in the kitty end of the pool. It's quad two and Q2. Thank you for joining us. Those are your top three things. Wow, that felt good. Uh, Great book uh, this morning I cited. One of the great teammates uh, I've ever had uh, in both sport and in life. Um, he was a great captain, actually, and not ironically, of the Princeton hockey team. Kevin Kaiser sent me this book um, after he decided to do something else in life, which was awesome. Like, the guy wrote, like, look at this. Look at this guy. He writes, look at the, he writes on the inside of the book. This is like a great note from a great friend. And this is a great book for risk management. Like, because it gets you back. Like, and, and I did. I do need some time away uh, once in a while. And thank you for putting up with that. But you know, this great, great comment by uh, Finnegan, which is most surfers, of course, would never be ready. And and that's that's a metaphor for what I do every day. Most people that do this will never be ready. They don't have the constitution. They don't have the discipline. They won't. They don't want to build a process. They want to get paid now. So to do this over 20, 30, 40 years, which I intend to do, I'm only in the 22nd year now. Well, yeah. You got, you got to put in a lot of time. You got to put in a lot of work. Of course, you know, Finnegan was talking about uh, swimming on the North Shore of Hawaii. Now, if you think you're pretty sweet in Long Island or in, in Westport, Connecticut, for that matter, eh, eh, that ain't going to fly. So, again, you got to have some more tools. You got to have some more reps. You have some great coaches, great friends. So, again, learn to trust those things. They're all part of your process, right? People, they're a big part of your process. Teammates, uh, understanding the game and how to play it with all of its components. You know, that's a real important thing in both surfing and in markets. So again, I learned a lot from that book. Thank you to my good friend, Kevin Kaiser, uh, for giving me that book uh, over the vacation. That's the perfect kind of a book that I needed to read. S&P 500 risk range. So again, if you're looking for life books, some, you know, it's not part of the triad of, you know, go to the Serpinski gasket just to bring it back. I did that before I left. I'm still going to do that today, right? So in the, in the three big things that we care about, obviously the math, the history, the behavioral of it all. Yeah. But there's still life. You can put a circle around that triangle, the circle of life, right? I think a lot of you know what that means. And sometimes you just got to chill out and deal with that. 4101. Look at that, Jonesy Butts. That low end of the range has a 41 in front of it. I mean, there used to be price targets on the sell side or yay old wall with 4,000. Now what are they going to do with their price targets? Or you could be Mike and whine about how the Russell's down and the other things are going up. That's what the Russell did last time before everything else went up. You notice that? That's not a leading indicator. It's a lagging indicator. At the end of the move, the, the small caps chase it one more time, and I think that's going to happen because the signal does. It has nothing to do with some valuation model. That would be ridiculous, right? 42.12, all-time high. We're back together, getting the band back together, Jay Buds, Jonesy Buds, and I. Look at that. This thing has had eight all-time highs in April. It's April the 19th. Wow. Why? 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 I need to know why. Well, why didn't we just, because the VIX was going to go towards 15. We told you that. You didn't have to know anything else. Mm -mm. No. It would have been nice to know about quad two. It would have been nice to know about this thing called inflation accelerating. It would have been nice to have known about housing and how, why, how and why lumber was up 15% again last week. But really, you don't need to know every single reason why. You need to know when. When, right? Because when you get into that volatility bucket, the investable one, where anyone can be bullish, literally, Lucy, she's seven, swims beautifully. She could buy stocks on the dips. When you're in this beautiful, beautiful blend, investable vol, and you start diving, even in the shallow zones, into the, the imagine what happens when the VIX goes to 10. There are no sharks there. No. Lucy, you can paddle away. What else we got going for you on Friday? Well, look at the <laughs> NASDAQ volatility got completely hammered. 26, uh, you know, with a, and now it's got 19 at the low of the range. I don't publish that daily, but you know I wrote it down. Hey, I keep some things to myself. 
All right, I'm sharing family stories with you, too. Uh, sectors, 8 out of 11 were up on Friday. Uh, did you buy the damn dip in energy again? I hope so. If you didn't, that's up to you. That's totally up to you. I, I'm not going to force your hand. I'm not going to hold it either. Uh, what else we got going for you? Cross Essex, let's fall. Did anything change in the move index? You know, did, if you asked anything last week in the bond market, other than the one day, basically one day, uh, one off move, did the move really move? Eh -eh. Did high yield spreads move? Eh -eh. Did five year, five year forward break evens move? Yeah, they actually went, th they went up in bond yields. They were up four basis points. So, like, you know, the German bond yield, they were up on the week. So, eh -eh, eh -eh, eh -eh, you know, all those things, they didn't confirm whatever anxiety you would have had. Did I have any anxiety at all? I think I was half cut when I was shorting gold and, and treasuries on Friday. I didn't care. I just came home for lunch. I just had some lunch, started hitting the buttons. Yeah, didn't care. Didn't care. Did it again this morning. It wasn't half cut. I, I, I think I had two beers. Uh, but that's what happens. Sometimes, Jonesy, you, put, you have a couple beers in a morning round of golf, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, when you're on vacay, having a little suds, you know, just you know, a little cerveza. What else we got going on for you this morning? Nothing's changed. Uh, actually, <laughs> what am I going to Nothing's changed in Japan. Now, two things have changed in two other places. China goes back to bullish trade this morning. So that's why it says neutral there. So anybody who's just looking at a quad wouldn't know that, right? So again, uh, and the number is 3,446, and it just closed like just above that. So again, just keep that line in mind. J China was up 1.5% with, with Japan flat, South Korea flat. So that's, that could be the beginning of something, something, you know, be careful, in other words. That's a shark if you're a short seller of China, which we have been. Uh, China was down again another 0.7% last week. It's been a bloody dog. It's one of the few things that's down in the last three months, including gold. Oh yeah, did you know that? If you go back three months, you go back, which you should do every single time you do your work when you're on vacation or not. In the last three months, uh, China's down 3.9% and gold's down 3.1%. Everything else pretty much is up. So when you talk about who's a serious long-term investor, a full cycle investor, somebody who understands the trades versus the trends, somebody who doesn't get head faked, now we know what we're talking. In the last three months, if you're long lumber, you're up 113.8%. Yeah. In the last three months, if you just stayed long oil, you're up 21%. Yeah, not down three or four. That's gold. That's terrible. Right? That's terrible. China, it's been terrible in the last three months. And we've had you out of both. And we're good with that. We're not going to have panic attacks as they go against us for one or two days. In fact, uh, today, uh, that's not something that I have on in real time, Lord, so I probably don't have any questions on China bouncing. Uh, what else we got going on for you uh, this morning? Actually, my shorts have been working pretty well in real time, Lord's X gold and gold miners for a couple of days. That's all right. I can handle it. I can handle it. Uh, uh, India, that's the other thing that changed. It broke immediate term trade support. Now, I tweeted that. Now, not everybody knows what that means, but you do. Okay, so it's lost its immediate term trade momentum. That means that it could be in a broader correction mode. So when you start to think about corrections that can become broader or deeper, 10, 15, whatever, uh, 10, 15 percent in terms of a drawdown, that could happen. So India, that gets reduced on that signal. On the down move, you don't buy more. You take some off. You get out of the water. Actually, since you already took some off when it was overbought, you're good, right? Same thing with Russia last week. So again, that's the whole point of the risk management process is because when they're up, you're selling some. You don't have to go back and grab your kid when the shark's coming. Right? You're, you've already pulled it in. You've already, you've already managed some risk. And then when you're, you're like, okay, it's time. Actually, the sharks are coming a little closer. Let's get everyone out. You, know, you can do that with India today. I got no problem with that. Some people who are ETF Pro subscribers might have you know, a panic attack for 30 bucks a month. But the fact of the matter is I, if they subscribed to this, they would have heard it because I just told you. Okay, so that's what it is. On the other side of that, a great long has been Taiwan. Uh, it's up 7.5% in the last month, up 0.6% um, last night as well. Uh, what else we got going on for you? Like Germany, France. Look at France. Oh, just a, just a wonderful looking chart. Look at that. Straight up. That's, you know, that's interesting. Despite the uh, COVID cases in France, uh, all-time highs, basically. People don't even care, right? They're completely shaking that Well, off. people that macro tourists care. Yeah. Like, I... Uh, for literally for a week, I didn't read my Twitter stream, yeah. which was so good. Um, <laughs> but again, this morning, any country, because I, I tweet the flags, yeah. and I put the country in block letters, autom automatic, COVID cases, COVID cases in this country. <laughs> it's updated. Like, do you think that all these epidemiologists are, are going to determine the new macro way of trading? <laughs> come on. Come on. 
these, these countries aren't trading on COVID. You might say, well, India, it's about COVID. Well, why is, uh, why is Taiwan not trading on COVID? I mean, it's, it's not, this is not what it is. You know? So at the end of the day, stay well, why, with the signals. Yeah. Why isn't France? You know, France. I mean, France is making new highs. Germany made a new high last week, new cycle high up 5.7% in the last month. Yes, they're overbought. Yes, I signaled sell some. I believe I did. If I didn't, I would have said it if I was here because I did it. I sold some Switzerland last week. EWL. That's overbought, up over 5% in a month, you know, for, for Switzerland or Germany, up almost 6%. That's been a great run for us. Again, you own a full investing cycle portfolio. So you're not just like 80% in crypto, right? You got X amount of your capital in that. You got X amount in European equities. You got X amount in basic materials. You got X amount in energy. You got X amount. That's, that's called diversification, right? Our way of doing it, not their way, full investing cycle way. What else we got going on for you this morning? Uh, I already talked about copper, corn, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, silver's up 10 basis points. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, that, that still is an underweight uh, or neutral uh, to bearish trend. Uh, we'll have to see where that goes today. I already talked about the 10-year yield, talked about it locally, talked about it globally. The Bitcoin, 55,215 is now low in the range. If you so get that again, or below it, take advantage of it. Again, it's not a support line. It's called a dynamic risk range, and only I have the keys to that little kingdom. Okay, so at the end of the day, Ethereum held up nicely uh, as well off the loan of the range. If you get it below the loan of the range, it's even better for those of you that are new. Uh, earnings season has started, and it is going to be a great one, and that's uh, one of the main reasons why we walked through it in the quad, uh, quad two and Q2 macro themes presentation is that, yeah, we think that this party is going to keep going, quad two. That's why we've got a big cartoon uh, quad two uh, a cruise boat. Yeah, so far, and, uh, earn, that's uh, what we're gonna with. yeah, so far earnings are beating, quote unquote, expectations by thirty point three percent. That's a lot. Month, month to date, our earnings seasons to date, which not a lot of data yet, but. You know, and what I'll be really interested in, and we'll have it up for you daily as soon as we want to get into the meat of it, or the rate of change if we don't have it up uh, today already, the rate of change of the earnings acceleration. Okay, I think we're just yeah, we probably, probably, probably don't, don't have, have enough data yet. But yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Get into questions here. Uh, number one's from, I don't think you really touched on this too much, um, but this is the kind of theme you, you were hitting on. Uh, good morning, this is John from Winter Garden, Winter Garden, Florida. The Russell's been flat for the past six weeks or so, and risk range is getting tighter with a bullish trend in quad two. What is that signaling? Thanks for all you do. Uh, great team. Just correcting. I mean, John, it was up 20% for the year. Uh, yeah. And the way I, I don't look at it the way that, like, the word, John, that you used, which is, did you, did you say it seemed or? What did you say? Uh, he didn't actually say. His language isn't bad on this. Okay, okay good. He said something about it being flat. Has been flat for the past six weeks. Well, that's not, I mean, in the last week, it's plus one, it's plus 0.9%. In the last uh, month, it's minus two and a half. That's maybe what he's more concerned with. In the last three months, which is the full investing cycle return for somebody who stayed with it, you know, we went long at November, right, John? So if you go back to November, obviously the return's far greater than 6.6% because if you go, if you just use uh, the year-to-date number for the Russell, it's up 14.6%. Right. So, you know, when things go up a lot, they correct. That's the reason. That's it. I mean. I don't, I don't think that, you know, I, I did, I, I think I saw, Mike Wilson just picks up the one thing that doesn't look like any other thing, and that's why we're going to correct. Uh, that's not the thing. The Russell, actually, if you go back to when it was correcting last time, back in October, um, was, the, like I said, it was one of the last things to then take off. So I would expect the Russell uh, to, again, consolidate like it has been, makes a series of higher lows, and then breaks out to the upside again. Okay. Uh, this is actually interesting. The number two question is about cannabis. Um, yeah, because it's down. Right. It's, we, so the it questions does. are about things that go down. Welcome back, Cam. M <laughs> MSOS risk range continues to drop to lower highs and lower lows, and is also narrowing as it does so. You built long ago, well done. But as a foolish hodler, should I accept that it may be going through more than a market consolidation? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, it's acted like 10 pounds of poop in a one pound bag. We know that. That's yeah. why it's a question. It's voted highly. I don't know. I, I like I, cannabis, but I like it at a different price, obviously. I sent multiple sell signals on this one uh, higher, and uh, I've not signaled buy yet on that. So I did see some feedback, you know, because uh, the team sent me feedback, you know, people asking about things that, like, Mountain Pass was down last week, I think. And, uh, no, no, I don't think I know. I know it was down. And um, 
I haven't seen a signal buy on it yet, no. Um, and maybe I will today. Uh, and that would mean that it's still bullish trend, because it is. It would have to break like 36, it's at 40. You know, yeah. we were on this for, you know, it was a great run. It's a, it's a better example than the Russell, because MSOS went to 55 or something like that. Yeah. And it's since gone from 55 to 40. Yeah. So you got to be really careful. And that's the whole point about selling some at the top end of the range. Not everybody wants to do it. But not everybody can surf the north shore of Hawaii. You got all these other things that you could be long in the meantime. That's the other thing, right? So you got, um, I like MSOS, but I, it's definitely not one of my top right now. I've not said that in a while. I've not signaled buy on it in a while. And ultimately, can cannabis go away or double from here? I don't know. I really don't know. I will say some of those companies, and this is more of a bottom up perspective, but it's like, like Graham F as an example. Like some of these companies have very strong balance sheets. If you even believe some proportion of their future projections are very quote unquote cheap so maybe a time to you know roll up your sleeves do some work and pay for our pennies uh, cannabis product yeah. which today reordered the deck chairs it took yeah. one of the names that we've liked used to be in the top three uh, took it down to the bottom of its list took a couple other ones up took a couple off um, that's 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 what people pay for you know you're not just going to get you know, stock tips. We're not giving you stock tips. We're gonna we're gonna give you a full investing cycle. I like cannabis, but I'm not. Uh, yeah. It's not yet signaled oversold. Uh, indicative of that, for those of you that subscribe to ETF Pro, you'll see that it is the one thing uh, that's got uh, a lower price than currently uh, than where it's been in terms of the risk range, and that's that's a good thing. And I, I think we, we were in a period where a lot of things worked, right? But the reality is, this whether it's in a stock or whatever, it's a lot of work. Yeah, you know, you gotta you gotta. Dig into things, and you can't just fall in love with a couple of things. My my strong sense is now that, and this is back to this is this is why I love this quote so much. It's like, not everybody's made out to be this way. Like a lot of people, and it was very kind of him to acknowledge and say, "Hey, look, I, 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 I hodled it. Like I, I didn't sell any." Is what he meant, right? Um, or some people, like you said, come in too late. Yeah, it's not an easy game. You're not going to buy everything low and sell it at the top, all of it, and then know what to do. You know, on the way down, absolutely not. It's, it's a very tough game. Okay. Um, I guess we're going through all the problems this morning in the top. That's okay. We'll, we'll do it. It's so, a, I, I'm going to be unfazed this morning by this. These is, this is Hans from Netherlands. Welcome back, Coach. Talk talk to us on XLU. How have you or would you have risk managed a short position in XLU? Closing that position at the higher end of the risk range when the trend signal turned neutral is painful. But but was that the thing to do last Friday? Well, I mean, Don's just pay for real-time alerts. I covered XLU, and uh, I don't think I've reshorted it yet, have I? Uh, Hans, apologies if I forgot. But you know, Hans, when bond yields go to the low end of the range, utilities are going to go up, right? That's that's yeah. you would have been you would have been aware of that. And utilities aren't much like uh, different than gold. The problem with utilities or XLP, which we've been telling you, Hans, and everybody, is that if we're going to make if we're going to have a melt up. Okay, so you, there's certain things you should have heard me say, like uh, if you're a Macro Pro subscriber or you listen to the show every day, took good notes. I said we're going to have a melt-up. You know what a melt-up is? It's when we make new all-time highs. We've had eight of them already, Hans. And what I also said is when volatility breaks down from 20 to 15 to 10, you're not going to make money on many shorts at all. Certainly not an index ETF that everyone's short, like utilities. When bond yields are falling, that's what happened. So. I think that if you subscribe to Real Time Alerts, you can look at my batting average all time in utilities in the high 80% range. Um, that's what I did. Like, I don't know, I don't, I'm not going to wake up this morning and say, well, what you didn't do. You know, the risk range was moving higher every single day. You know, it's not something that you should have been shorting, um, or at least I didn't. Uh, and that's something that, that's it's just something you can learn from. You know, Real Time Alerts isn't a portfolio, but it definitely has my thoughts on stuff like that. Another question people could be asking me is, why didn't you short gold until like Friday? Yeah, well, because the, the, the signal question. said not to short it until like Friday, and then again I shorted some more this morning. You know, um, so in my PA, you know, so again I can't hold your hand on that. It's just what it it's what it did. You got these positions doing that, that position doing this. You just gotta you gotta have it all on, right? I mean, you don't have to. You can do whatever you want. But imagine the alternative. Imagine you woke up every day without the macro show, without risk ranges. What are you actually doing? Like, I mean, I I I, I fear what people could be doing. I guess those are the people that shouldn't be surfing anywhere in Hawaii, never mind on the North Shore. <laughs> okay, uh, this is Ross from Houston. Uh, Coach, good to have you back. Thank you. While you're out, it has become obvious that the fifth horseman has been ch chosen. XLC has the greatest 
three month price momentum of plus 17.7 percent and was down last week on on decelerating volume and a stable implied vol volatility premium uh, do you prefer putting this one on the field over xlk um, xlc versus no. xlk no i would have said that if i did but nice breakdown of what it's done i was just looking no i didn't i haven't shorted um you know what gold Gold's a half a percent against me. I, maybe I have to go back on vacation. Uh, that in, in in you know in, in real time alerts. Why did it come back in short TLT? Like you know now like it's because it's at the right spot, right? So you know these bond yield things and the utilities things. Maybe I will short utilities today if people get completely uh, bamboozled about it. We'll have to see. Okay. Actually, this is an interesting. This is stock specific, but we uh, talked about this this morning. It's one of our ideas. Clove reportedly has 150% short interest. No, it doesn't. So yeah, I was going to just clarify that. We, we talked about this on the call, and uh, yeah, it turns out that data was actually wrong. So yeah, you know, would be be careful with, and you know, I think it, maybe it's become a bit of a Reddit stock because of the short interest. But the short interest is still high, but I think it's actually supposedly accurately around 40% or so. So you know, before you grab a data point and make that your thesis, I think you know. Be, be careful to verify it. And, and, like, really, is your thesis on a stock just what the short interest is? I mean, high short interest stocks are dangerous to be short. That one's been a great short, uh, other than Friday. Um, so, again, yeah, when somebody puts out a, a note saying that it's 144% short interest and really it's more like 30 to 40, yeah, take advantage of it. Okay. So, some questions on the VIX. Um, and you know, just sort of how people should think about it, kind of longer term. This is, this is a question from Jeremy in Coburg, Ontario. Do you think the VIX goes back to ten during the immediate term up cycle? How do we figure out what the range of the of VIX could be, a sort of longer term? Yeah, if you go to a slide, we're just that's just uh, Jeremy's asked from Coburg's asked the uh, Coburg Cougars, you know, the junior hockey team. We've these guys moving up the ranks on. Um, on, on people voting up as questions. On slide 65, you can see, um, you know, this has been our call the whole time. So now that it's there, it shouldn't be what you're preparing for. I mean, you should have practically prepared for it before the S&P made eight all-time highs this month. <laughs> yeah, so it should go, it should, generally goes towards 10. I mean, why not? Okay. Um, and then NASVAL, uh, go to the next slide, which is, Nasval slide 66 in the current macro deck. I mean, it got to, it, this thing. This thing could easily go towards 15. See how I wrote? It could get cut in half towards 15. See where that? See where we wrote that? There are a lot of things that people concern themselves with in the morning, and I do appreciate coming back to work and having three three questions just be about the three things that didn't work last week. I appreciate that from all of you. I sincerely do. But what I'd also appreciate from you is having good comprehension, reading comprehension type skills. All right. So what I want you to do is like when it says something like this, you heard what I said, right? See how the arrows point towards that? Because that's where it's been. You know, that, I just want you to be good at this. I want you to be really good at this because I want you to be able to sh to metaphorically surf the North Shore of Hawaii. Right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta take it all in. Because if you don't, and you're just staring at one little thing. Because that's that one thing that you don't have right today. You're not going to be good at this. You're going to be really bad at this. And I don't want that. I want you to be great. I really do. I hope you sincerely know. I, I know I'm not the touchiest, feeliest guy, but I think I left a couple weeks ago saying I love you. I do. I want to be critical, but I also want to, 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 to be critical in a way that improves your game. These are huge vol signals that we gave you well before these S&P 500 all-time highs. So after the fact, maybe next time, in the next 40 years when this happens again, uh, you'll be you'll know what to do, right? I mean, you'll understand. You'll trust me. You'll trust that I love you, and you'll trust my process. Because this time, if you're just in fear of what I say every day, it's not going to work. If you're in fear of yourself, it's definitely not going to work. Okay? You got to understand. There's a lot to this. All right, great. We're going to wrap it up there. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Back at it tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Take care.